Hey guys, Chris here from Kite Republic. It is very cold and it is very wet here in Melbourne and this can only mean one thing, it is kite tour season. So we've been running KR tours now for about 20 years. The question that we get most, what do I need to take with me and how should I pack it? So we thought we'd try to answer that for you. To start off with, obviously you're probably choosing somewhere warm, somewhere beautiful, perfect beaches, great wind, all of that. And so we've got stuff for the, the warmer conditions in this one. If you would like to know what to take to colder areas, shoot us a message, drop a line at the bottom, and we'll do our best to answer that quickly for you. So to start off with, what do we need? Obviously, we're gonna need our kites. As a general rule, we're gonna take a minimum of two kites wherever we go, and often we'll even take a third kite. The two kites would generally be the standard two kites that you'll use. And the best way to find out if you're going somewhere that has different conditions, if you're on tour with us, you ask us. If you're on tour with someone else, you ask them. Find out what is it going to be like. Now, often when you ask that question, you're going to get the answer, oh, it's gonna be like, you know, 25 knots, 30 knots, firing, you're gonna need small kites, all of that. Now, something you must make sure you ask, Am I going to miss half a day of possible kiting every day if I only take those smaller kites? Or would taking something like a 15 meter, like a 12 meter, whatever it might be, a bigger end kite, is that going to buy me an extra few hours of those maybe conditions that I might not have been able to ride otherwise? So worth knowing before you go and worth asking either a local school, local place, or your tour leaders, because they'll have that information. For what we'll be packing into the bag and showing you in a little bit, we've got a nine meter and a 12 meter here. As well as the kites, obviously you're going to be taking bars and lines, yeah? So a lot of people with only two kites might only have one bar and lines. And when you're right next to your local shop or when you're, you know, you're kiting in the same place and you know how if something breaks, you can get it fixed quickly, that can be okay sometimes. Make sure when you're going away on tour that you find out if that's still the case for the brand you have. If not, and in general I would recommend anyway, take an extra bar and line. So, if there's two people going and you're taking three kites, if you've only got two bar and lines and you cross lines or you, you know, nick a rock or something as you're launching or landing, then you've got one that's not working and someone's out of the water. So for two people and three kites, I'd be taking three bar and lines. For one person with two kites, I would still be taking two bar and lines. So have that back up so that you've always got that, uh, got that covered and you're not gonna be stuck off the water. Now, uh, you're going to be taking your board and we've got a second board here to show you how to pack into the bag well. As well as that, obviously your harness, your safety leash. With your kites, your bar and lines, you're probably gonna to wanna to make sure you take a couple of the crucial lines as extras. So maybe the safety line, maybe the depower line, have a look at what you've got, make sure your gear's tip top before you go and then ask your local business that you generally get your gear off, what should I consider? I would generally always take a screwdriver for my, obviously for getting fins on and off, for getting bindings on and off. One of our favorites is this FCS ratchet tool. The ratchet tool will have Allen keys that, well, for surfboards and things. It also works on the duotone harnesses and bits and pieces in case you're wanting to change over spreader bars. Sorry, the ion harnesses. And it also has, in the end of it, it's also got a range of different tools. So it doesn't take up much room in your bag and it's got heaps of things covered for you. I would also take a good fix-it kit. We've got great KR kits we put together, as well as that brands like Kite Fix will have them. And this will have material for repairing any canopy rips. It'll have material for repairing leading edges, for fixing bladders, all of that sort of stuff, just to keep you on it. And to be honest, even if you've got no bloody clue how to use this thing, if you have it there and it's a kiting spot, I promise you people will know how to use it. So you'll be able to check out some of our other videos for that. Otherwise, just have, have it there to be able to fix. Now, as well as that, you're going to need an excellent kite bag to get you onto, your, onto the aeroplane and uh, to keep all your gear together while you're there. We love these Ion gear bags. They're super good value. They come with 
not only the bag, but that little kit, you can keep fins, tools, all that sort of stuff in. But yeah, so in their range, they've, Ion have obviously got the gear bags, which are the best value bags. You go up into the gear tech bags, and the difference is basically a slightly harder bottom where the wheels are, and also they have breather holes in it the next level up as well. So if you're going somewhere and you know you'll have your gear possibly wet in a bag for a week or for a good few days at least, it's probably worth going up that level just so that you've got the breather stuff and your bag doesn't smell when you open it. But yeah, they're, they're fantastic bags. We'll show you how to pack into those in a second. A couple of other things you can consider. Are these compression bags, instead of taking your kite bags, you could, put, you could put your kites into these to get them a bit smaller. Or there's a couple of other tricks which we'll show you. Taking a first aid kit, just a good basic first aid kit's always good. Generally, kite tours revolve around places that are nice and tropical and have a lot of coral which means you can get some little coral cuts along the way as well. So having some hydrogen peroxide, a little bottle of that will help to, to kill the living bits in that as well. Um, so it's worth packing that into there. Will you be taking regular cap to make sure you don't get cooked and stuck in your room with heat stroke? Or will you be taking a hat like this iron one here that you can actually clip up and kite in as well? Will you be wearing a helmet while you're kiting? Whatever it might be, don't just expect you'll be able to get it where you go because often that's not the case. So make sure you're prepared. That's a few things to think about there. Over here, you can see a pair of booties. For us Melbourneites, it can be freezing in winter. So we get booties just so we can feel our toes. When you're actually traveling, generally you don't need it for the thermo side, but having this rubber sole means if you're walking along where it's a bit reefy or you're walking along sand bits that are, you know, that are a little bit sharp, can just mean the difference between being on the water every day or not, or having cut feet and actually wanting to rest and having sore feet. So taking some booties is a really good idea from that side of things. Having a poncho or a towel. So you can take a regular towel, obviously, but you know, taking a towel, poncho, is a really good idea. You can chuck that on and it can protect you from the wind if you get a day that's a bit cooler and you're just hanging out on the beach and it can be your regular towel as well. So I definitely recommend something like that. And then again, on the sun protection side, even though you might not need wetsuits or whatever, you have to check in with your tour or the place you're going to with that, you can get these great thermo tops that'll just take the edge off in case it gets a bit cooler or if you're traveling in boats and you're wet a lot, things like that. Something like a thermo top or just taking a shorty wetsuit anyway is brilliant. Um, and then these wet sh shirts are an absolute no-brainer for anywhere tropical. So you don't want to be the guy that got absolutely cooked on the first day and then had to be in the room with aloe vera all over them for the next few. So check out the wet shirt side of it and lucky last, do not forget your pump, yeah? On the pump side as well, a lot of brands now are making either an L, like a large size, which is sort of seen as the standard, this one here, or an extra large, which is a bit bigger and easier to pump. The extra larges are awesome for when you're at home because you pump everything up a little bit quicker. However, when you're traveling and you're trying to save room, you might want to consider the standard size. So just keep that one in mind when you're choosing your bits and pieces to take along. Now we've got all this gear, so packing the bag. First thing we've got to do is get the boards prepared. So I've got my ion gear bag here. When packing multiple boards, when packing any boards, every single fin needs to come off. Okay, the, even the bottom fins like this will actually be sharp and cut into the bag. So first things first, take off all the fins from all the boards. When you are doing this, make sure that you put those screws back into the fin and just don't randomly put them elsewhere accidentally. Get to your place and have fins with no screws. You'll thank me later. Okay, so we've got our fins off. Then when we're packing, if we're doing multiple boards, the top board can keep the foot straps on. Totally fine, just save a few minutes, keep the foot straps on. Every board that you're putting under that needs the handle, the foot straps, the fins, everything off. I would always suggest between every board, normally you're only gonna have two, maybe a third board per bag, but between each board, I'd always put a towel or my poncho or something. Just that little bit of rubbing could leave a scuff mark or something like that. And we saw that little clip before. That little clip's just there, basically to keep the boards so they're not moving. 
Beautiful, so we've got that in there. Next thing we go to the next big items, which are our kites. This is a really interesting one, the kites, because there's a few different ways we can do it depending on what we need. The first thing we need to know is when we get to our location, do we need a kite bag? Are we gonna be riding scooters or in cars? If we're riding scooters, then often things like the compression bags aren't as good because they tend to have just a single strap there. You might be able to put it on your back or not, but having backpack straps and having a big comfy bag you can throw stuff in between the kite spot and where you're staying can be really good. Do I need one for every bag? Am I gonna need a few or can I put two kites into one single bag? That's a really good way to save space in your bag. We can show you a couple of wrapping techniques for that. Effectively, you can either lie the big kite down and then the small kite on top of it and roll them in as if they were just one kite. Obviously, then you need to unpack two at the other end or you can just pack them down a little bit smaller and put the two in one bag. So that's one way. Or do you prefer the compression bag where you make them really small, really easily and you're happy enough on the scooter or whatever you're doing at the other end to have it over your shoulder. That tends to be the, the sort of thing you've got to weigh up depending on where you're going. For right now, these two kites have been packed very lazily. Yeah, they are not small, they're not small in the bag, and we're gonna see whether we can fit the gear in just regularly like that, keeping both of these big bags in there as well. So, I'm gonna make them smaller by cinching that strap in a little bit. So remember, these are probably the next biggest weights, apart from your board, maybe even more actually, I should say. So you want these to be at the end of your bag that has the wheels, yeah? That way when you walk through the airport, so if I put them, so you wanna make sure that the bags are right up the end where the wheels are at the bottom of the bag. That way when you walk through the airport, your board gives the bag its shape and your board makes it a nice, easy thing to carry. And then by having the next biggest weight in the bag down that wheel end, it effectively means that this end is a lot lighter, yeah? If I swapped it the other way, I'd have a, uh, every time I walked somewhere, I'd be battling. So just keep that in mind with your packing. We've got our bag, we've got the two boards in there, we've got two kites packed horribly and massive still sitting there. I, th I reckon I could probably get four kites into that space if I packed them properly. And then around here, we've got our bars and lines, spares, fins, kits, all of that, pump, couple of shirts, headwear, all of that. So there's a fair bit of gear here still to go in that bag. The next thing I'm thinking about is I look at it, I go, where's the weight and where's the size? So the first thing is the two bars are the next heaviest things that I'm looking at here. So I'm gonna slide them along the side. I'll do it on this side so you can see. I'm gonna slide them down this end. Again, because that's the end that my wheels are on and it's gonna be easy to carry. Now, when I think about size, I've now got a pump and I've got a harness that are really odd sizes and not as easy to pack. With the harness, if you get really stuck, you can quite happily take off this bit here, the spreader bar, you can just detach it so it's easier to pack in two separate parts. That way you'd have something that lies over there and then something separate. Um, I'm just gonna tuck this in along the side there so that goes no problems there. I've got a pump that's very big, but what I don't wanna do with my pump is have it, have it sitting on the side where the bags in the airport you know, get tapped up against it and can break it because that one's probably the only thing here that's a little bit fragile. So I'm gonna pop that in there and that'll sort of get covered within the board. So it's now got a bit of structure to it. Put my first aid kit with all my spares. Okay, again, big-ish, there's a big space for me there. It's the beauty of going, instead of going for, if you've got a board that's say 139 centimeters, if you go for a 139 bag, it is a little bit shorter but you also don't have any extra room around. So you don't want it too big, or when you go to walk it through the airport, it's not this easy stiff structure, and you've got, you're out here and you've got this floppy bit. 
that's really frustrating. But a little bit of extra size can go a long way with your packing. Okay, got a helmet here. Again, I'll use that to protect in there a little bit. All these little things can slide anywhere, so that's why you just leave them till last. Don't really want to bend the brims or anything, so I'll pick a good spot that's that's protected. That one's got the board directly under it, so at least they'll stay between flat and what they are now, which is always good. I, again, could very easily get another kite in there and probably one each, one each extra in each bag. I'll just close that up. One thing we absolutely love about these ion bags as well is they're not too small. So they're not a tiny bag that you sort of pack everything just into and then the zippers are bursting at the seams. It's actually got quite a big shape to it, but then what we can do is we close these up and we can make that as small as we want it to be. Cinch it together. And again, we've got a nice small bag. Everything's tightened in there, but if I wanted to pack my entire suitcase into that bag right now, Apart from the fact I would probably go overweight and struggle to get it through the airport, I have got so much extra space there that it would be easy. So it's a perfect scenario, that's what you're after. You can make it smaller, but you don't have to. So good luck on your kiting trip. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of an idea of what to pack, how you can do it. We are so here for questions. We love tours, we love getting people on the water and uh, getting that community together. So hit us up, kiterepublic.com.au. Have an awesome trip. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beautiful Ice Ducky.